Welcome to a new episode of the Network State Podcast. Today I'm here with a sender and a minister from the Marshall Islands, as well as an entrepreneur who's helped go and get their new crypto law up and running. It's a DAO law that allows you to essentially build an interface between an on-chain entity and uh, you know the off-chain legal system. Uh, I made a small investment in this company, MyDAO, that's kind of an agent that'll help you get set up, but they've been operating under their own power for a while. They've set up more than 100 DAOs in the Marshall Islands. And with me today is Adam Miller, uh, Minister Joe Bajong, and Senator David Paul, all of uh, the Marshall Islands. And they're going to talk to us today about the, uh, the new Marshall Islands DAO law. So, uh, Minister, Senator, Adam, let's go. Yeah, sure. Uh, Yahweh, my name is uh, Joe Bajong, and I'm the newly appointed uh, Minister of Justice, Immigration, and Labor here in the Marshall Islands. My name is David Paul. I am the, the current chairman for the uh, appropriation Committee. We also have here Adam Miller. And uh, Adam, can you introduce yourselves? Yeah, hey, everyone. My name is Adam Miller. And I've been into crypto and Web3 for a while, but DAOs are really my gem. You know, I really believe that DAOs are going to change the way we organize everything on Earth, people, resources. And so my mission in life now is to help bring DAOs to the world. And the way I'm doing that today is collaborating with the government of the Marshall Islands to create Web3 and DAO legal and regulatory frameworks that are better than what exists everywhere else in the world. Yes, awesome. And that's why we're actually here today because um, there's a number of uh, crypto entrepreneurs, founders, investors who are uh, looking for uh, good jurisdictions to operate. And the Marshall Islands set up a new law that may make it actually very competitive. Um, so, you know, just before we get there, maybe we can just put the Marshall Islands on the map, kind of help people know where it is. So it's located in the Pacific. Uh, maybe we could put up a map on screen. Great. And Senator, you know, Minister, do you want to talk about the Marshall Islands? Tell people who've never been there what it's all about? The Marshall Islands is located like 2,400 miles southwest of Hawaii and is right in the middle between Hawaii and Australia. The Marshall Islands is, is close to about a million square kilometers of ocean territory, but the land mass is only the size of Washington, D.C. So you, you can imagine, it's, we're, we're a, we, we maybe call a small island nation, but we're a big ocean state. You know, it's tropical all year round, and you know, the Marshall Islands has over 24 atolls within the Marshall Islands, the jurisdiction of the Marshall Islands. And the population is around, uh, in, in countries, maybe around 43,000. But total Marshallese globally, I would say over 80,000. So it's a very small country and uh, is in you know, close and freely associated states with the United States, an independent country, but in close and free associated with the United States. Awesome. And you know that million miles of ocean uh, puts you near, you know, several other Pacific islands like uh, Palau, I think, is nearby, Micronesia, right? And then some of the other Pacific islands that are also independent states, so your neighbors. That's good also to locate it between Hawaii and Australia. The thing is, as a full sovereign state, as a UN member, uh, you can set your own policies. You have uh, passed a new law. That law is potentially quite interesting for crypto folks around the world, the, the new Marshall Islands Dow Law. Uh, and maybe Adam uh, or, or Sender, maybe you can kind of talk about this. Tell us what it's about at a high level. I'll, I'll just kick it off and then I'll invite the minister to make a comments and then I'll have Adam to, you know, expound on, on it. But basically back in 2022, we enacted what we call the Decentralized Autonomous Organization Act of 2022, which is the Dow Law. We call it the Dow Law. I mean, RMI is not no stranger to to the, the Web3 uh, initiative back in 2017, or 2018, sorry, we, the, the parliament actually passed the first ever uh, SOF, the SOF legislation, which is make mm -hmm. SOF as the, the SOF means sovereign, as the uh, legal tender for the Marshall Islands as a cryptocurrency. Uh, now, the law is still in the books, but we have not yet implemented because of many regulatory implementation challenges. We thought that uh, the, the passage of these, the soft law taught us 
so much about crypto, the Web3 and all of that. You can imagine during that time when, when we were passing it, people were actually Googling mm. what mm. is cryptocurrency in real time while we were having a national debate on the floor of the parliament and people were basically Googling and trying to understand and that was trying to understand what does cryptocurrency means. And it was a very profound moment in the history of the country because, you know, everybody was just trying to understand what does the, uh, the blockchain technology is all about. And then here we were at that time passing the legislation. And my God, when we passed it, we got so much criticism from like the, the likes of the World Bank, the IMF, the Asian Development Bank, even the United States Treasury. They, they thought that we were like, you know, we went rogue. Basically, they thought that we, we were, were losing our minds and <laughs> we were losing on grip on reality. But for us at the time, we said, no, we, we knew that was the future. Now, fast forward to today, when we went, we went back to the, United, uh, the World Bank uh, last year in October, the mm -hmm. only thing that they were talking about was digital currency. You know, it was easy. You know, three years later, four years later, people were now talking about you know, staple coin, digital currency, not so much crypto, but I mean, yep. is within the same uh, ecosystem, right? But the fact that we were ridiculed, we, we, they thought that we were crazy, but now everybody's talking about it. It's now become part of the mainstream. So that's why we, ha we have, I vote for the, for the autonomy, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization Act of 2022, and we're gonna build on it, but. The reason why the, the Minister of Justice is part of this is because he's the one that is actually enforcing this thing. Well, first of all, that's awesome. And can you tell us, uh, you know, the SOV law was 2018, is that right? SOV stands for store of value or, or SOV, uh, can you tell, tell us what that was? That was like a billing block for the, the Dow law that you've just passed. The SOV is, is, uh, is, is unredeemable. It's unredeemable, but it's also a uh, legal tender in the Marshall Islands. There's nothing backing it up. It's basically the, the, the perceived value of it. And, and actually, the, the, what really actually uh, gave value uh, to it is actually the technology behind it. That, so that's how the soft concept came about. So we didn't want it to make it as if there was a, if it was redeemable because, right. you know, it, like the dollar is not redeemable. So we wanted to make sure that it is no different than any other currencies of the world, you know, so, so we were not far from, you know, what other countries that have their own, own currency were doing, but it was actually in a digital format, so to speak. Very interesting. So basically, you're very, one of the very first to do that. And, you know, El Salvador and, you know, U.S. states like Wyoming and Tennessee and so on have also passed, you know, cryptocurrency and, and DAO-related uh, laws. So that's actually happened after that SOV law. And so you're one of the first sovereigns in the world to do that. That's really cool. So that brings us to today, I think. Uh, that's actually a really awesome history. And, you know, one thing that I, I was interested in is how did you have the energy to be a startup country because as a small country the good thing is you're nimble and in theory you can come to consensus with a relatively small number of people you can make decisions you can adopt new technologies however you've also got big neighbors and you've got the world bank and all these folks who will yell if you do something too interesting right as you mentioned so how did you kind of get the energy to be kind of a startup country what, what how, how did that happen so like the marcelese people we're navigators that's cool. Yeah, you got you are pioneers to get all the way out to the middle of the islands there, huh? Is in our DNA. That's cool. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, it may be interesting for other kind of tech things in the future. I don't know, self-driving car cities or things like that. That's actually really interesting. I should visit. Uh, actually, in fact, everybody watching this video should probably go and should they visit the Marshall Islands? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Uh, uh, are there cruises there? How, how do you get there? Uh, is it plane? What, how, do you, how do you travel there if you wanted to go there? Well, we have only one airline service here in the Marshall Islands, and that's the United Airlines. Uh, you can come via that that airline, and then visit the other other islands with our domestic flights. Uh, we have a domestic airline, Air Marshall Islands. You could visit all these beautiful small islands around the uh, the, the other smaller atolls in the Marshall Islands. Or by boat. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Alaji, uh, let, me, let me tell you also something that we're also working on that you'd be very interested to know. 
and your audience will be will know about this. What we're trying to we're we're trying to do what we call an NFT of all these islands. There's so many islands in the Mars. There's over thousands of islands. We're trying to do an NFT on them so we can uh, digitize these assets. These are idle assets that are there, and we can actually you know put it out in the in the Web three. Wait, so so uh, would you just be buying like a digital? you know, art representation, uh, art representation of the island, or would you actually be buying the island itself? Not, well, not buying it, but actually leasing it. Oh, really? That's interesting. Wow. Okay. So uh, you have yep. my attention. Yep. Um, that, that, there's this, uh, there's this great site actually, which we could put up called, I think it's like private islands online. Let's, you know, let's cover the uh, the Dow law just for a second and then come back to the private islands because I'm actually interested in both. Uh, so the Dow law, you guys just passed that last year, 2022. OK, um, Adam, you put that on screen. So t tell us uh, tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, first of all, why do laws matter in Web3? Right. A lot of people might say, well, we're building a censorship resistant, you know, subversive revolutionary system. And that's fine that some people are working on that. But the fact is that most Web3 products and most DAOs are just trying to follow the law. Right. They need the same benefits that other organizations get when they create legal entities like the protection from unlimited liability for their members and the ability for the project to own property. Right. To own its own name, own its own logo. Right. And be able to assert those property rights. So DAOs and Web3 projects need those things, too. The problem with legacy laws, almost every law everywhere in the world relating to legal entities require organizations to do things that no DAO wants to do and no Web3 project wants to do. So that's things like requiring all of the members to disclose their real names and physical addresses. I mean, right there, you lost 95 percent of DAOs, right, if not more. They require traditional boards and management teams which usually DAOs don't want, with some exceptions. They require paper record keeping. Even if it's like email and PDF rec record keeping, DAOs don't want to do that because all the records already exist on the blockchain, right? Governments are trying to enforce dated securities laws and apply concepts like traditional securities to governance tokens. And even just generally, you know, not allowing you to perform critical functions like voting and meetings on chain. So... What we've done in collaboration with the Marshall Islands is pass this new law that you're talking about. And it starts with very basic things. And I have this up on the screen, but just defining what is a blockchain? What is a digital asset? Right? What is a DAO? Right? So that you can then include these things in the nature of how you govern and regulate these organizations. Importantly, this clause I have up on the screen simply says that DAOs can be limited liability companies. And we call them DAO LLCs, but this is the line that gives DAOs all the protections that most companies get very easily by the law. This clause in the law is about management. So just saying that a, an algorithm can manage an organization instead of having a traditional management team, right? That is so powerful. That's what so many DAOs are trying to do with smart contracts. Things like a membership interests, right? So in, a, in most DAOs and Web3 projects, there's some kind of tokenized membership interest, whether it's an NFT, whether it's one person, one vote, or one token, one vote. But to acknowledge in the law that you can have a governance token, right? And the purpose of that governance token can be to represent your voting rights or your economic interest, if it's a for-profit, in the organization, right? In the project. And finally, rights to information. So traditional LLCs, a member or the government or anyone could come to you and say, I want a copy of all the organization's records. And you'd have to provide them with a PDF or a binder full of records. And so our law in this clause and others fixes that by saying, as long as you're keeping all of your records on an open and public blockchain, you don't have to furnish your records in any other way. So these are just examples of some of the clauses that are in the law, but it's just these basic things that say, look, here's how traditional organizations did things. Here's how Web3 organizations do things and therefore allowing those things to happen in these new Web3 organizations. Well, I, I love this because, uh, you know, I, I often talk about, you know, there's the fiat currency, the cryptocurrency interface uh, that turned out to be more important and profitable than anybody ever thought. With the fiat currency to cryptocurrency exchange concept, I've often thought, and actually we're in the middle of this now, that you're going to have the fiat identity to crypto identity exchange. That's kind of what uh, Palau is doing with its RNS.ID, 
or you have the fiat company, the crypto company exchange or interface. And that's kind of what you've set up and, and some other jurisdictions are exploring. Because there's no reason to have a piece of paper represent something if you can actually have it in code. For example, if your votes can be on chain, well, they're cryptographically signed, right. they're recordable, it's a data structure, you can program against it, and you don't have to have just reams and reams and reams of paper. And so this makes a ton of sense logically, and I'm really glad that there is a place that's kind of pioneered this. And so now we can actually have an on-chain representation of a company that is fully legally compliant. Yeah, and not only that, but I'll just add that DAOs are much more transparent and they have much more guaranteed compliance than traditional companies. So, you know, some people might react to this the same way they react to cryptocurrencies with fear, with, oh, you know, couldn't this be used for criminal activity? But the Marshall Islands and, and our company, and we share the compliance obligation, actually have way more visibility into all of these DAOs than any government has into any other company on Earth. So it's, it's really a win-win, right? Where people get to do what they want to do on chain with these Web3 projects. And the government can make sure that there's no illegal activity happening because every transaction is recorded on chain. That's great. Yeah. And I, I mean, the big thing about this is simply that concept of what that interface looks like and how on-chain things become, uh, at first you mirror things on-chain and then the mirror becomes a primary. It's kind of like, you know, the New York Times for a long time, obviously it was just a piece of paper, and, right? And then they had a New York Times website and those existed for a while. And now you could say the website is primary and the paper is very secondary. And I think you're one of the first to start making the on-chain entity be a full companion and peer to the to the paper entity and eventually in 10 or 20 years or, or whoever knows then that becomes like primary so uh when you know when you pass this uh when did you pass this in 2022 june or ish uh november november okay so it's just a few months old it's less than a year old right now yeah have you set up any entities under this uh structure so far yeah almost 100 entities Oh, really? Okay, that's great. Yep. And what is the, uh, what's a procedure if, if somebody were to want to go and set one up? What are the costs? Where do they go? And, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so, um, and I'll, I'll throw a slide up with some QR codes even. Um, we have a guide to DAO Incorporation that actually not only helps you if you want to be in the Marshall Islands, but it helps you think through, should you incorporate your DAO? Should you incorporate your Web3 project? And where? Right, because every situation really is different. But if you want to register a DAO LLC in the Marshall Islands, you reach out to MyDAO. It's at uh, MyDAO.org. It's M-I-D-A-O.org. And we can also connect you and your project with our partner network of over 300 vetted Web3 lawyers. And that's actually a really common challenge that we hear projects having is finding the right Web3 lawyer with the right jurisdictional expertise, whether it's Marshall Islands, whether it's Europe, whether it's United States or more than one, and the right expertise to help you solve the particular challenges that you have. So we can also help get people connected at no charge with, with good Web3 lawyers. Awesome. That's cool. And if you go back one slide, there was something on kind of the advantages of the Marshall Islands, if you go back one. So you want, do you want to speak to this? Like, so uh, of course, you know, crypto entrepreneurs are global. They can go all over the world. Uh, you know, why should they go and use the Marshall Islands over, you know, Cayman or, or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. So there are clear advantages over Cayman, BVI, Switzerland, USA, and, and other jurisdictions. Um, the USA is an easy one. And people who listen to your podcasts will know that the USA is not a friendly jurisdiction for Web3. And in fact, it's not a friendly jurisdiction in a, in a number of ways, right? And so it's almost obvious why you wouldn't want to base your DAO or Web3 project in the United States. And it's just about the fear of what the federal government is going to do. Even if you have a Wyoming DAO LLC, which is, is a very innovative thing that they've done, very similar to what we've done, the problem is you're in the United States. Um, so that's the issue with the US. When it comes to every other jurisdiction in the world, so Cayman, BVI, Swiss, they offer foundations and corporations and, and trusts. And all of these corporate structures have boards and officers. And when you have boards and officers, that creates, it's not only just kind of against the principle of decentralization to, to many of us in Web3, but it creates a target for regulators and law enforcement to go after that board, right? It could be the founders, it could be some other group of people. All of a sudden, you're not really decentralized. And so you might get in more trouble with the SEC when they say, well, is there a central group of people that you're relying on to get a return on your investment? 
So there's no Dow LLC anywhere else in the world other than the Marshall Islands and the United States. Um, so if you want to be offshore and you want a Dow LLC, you have to come to the Marshall Islands. Um, and by the way, Dow LLCs are not just for DAOs. So, you know, not everyone loves the term Dow. And a lot of crypto projects have multiple entities, right? You might have an entity in the US, in the BVI, in the Marshall Islands. Um, so any Web3 project can usually take advantage of a DAO LLC as some part of their ecosystem. And that's something we can help people think through. We're also working on a new laws. So we've actually passed two laws uh, so far in the Marshall Islands. The first was actually in 2021 and the DAO Act built on that. And we have more that we're working on in the pipeline, laws and regulations to continue to help the Marshall Islands be the best place in the world and the only sovereign nation that truly recognizes the nature of DAOs and Web3. So you are kind of crypto first is one way of thinking about it. And you're not retrofitting an existing structure onto crypto. You really have thought about it from scratch to to kind of merge with, with uh, how DAOs actually are. The law is meeting where the projects are. You know, to your earlier point, a lo I, one way of thinking about what we do is it's a legal bridge between Web 2 and Web 3. Right. It's right. for Web3 projects that need to bridge over to the TradFi world, the Web2 world. And the way we do that actually is by customizing the LLC. So this, these DAO LLCs are limited liability companies that just have slightly different treatment under the law in all the ways that really matter to Web3. Right. Like, again, not having a board, not having to keep paper records, things like that. So so it is uh piggybacking on the LLC, which is the most common legal entity in the world, by far right. the most popular. Um, and that's because we want these DAOs to have all the same benefits, to be able to open a bank account, open an exchange account. Right? A lot of our DAOs are doing things like opening bank accounts because they might want to sponsor an event that doesn't take crypto or get paid by a sponsor that only has fiat currency. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So is Marshall Islands a good spot for a crypto company to open a bank account? So the Marshall Islands banks are not yet open for business for Web3 and crypto companies. Um, and I mean, the minister could could maybe speak to this uh, in more detail, but Marshall Islands entities. So actually, I mean, maybe the minister could talk about this, but for a long time, the Marshall Islands has been one of the most popular jurisdictions for shipping companies to register. So there are about 50 publicly traded companies on NASDAQ and New York Stock Exchange that are Marshall Islands companies. And so unless you're in the shipping industry or you're, you may have seen the Marshall Islands flag, which is on boats all over the world, um, you may not know it, but this is a tried and true destination. And so banks all over the world will accept Marshall Islands companies, including Dow LLCs, to open an account. Well, yeah, I mean, the Aaron, you, you touched on the, the ship registry and the corporate registry. The banking sector in the Marshall Islands has always been opponent of anything that has to do with crypto. No, is no secret that you know once crypto or digital currencies are going to be becoming a dominant force, then it will actually render these banks redundant because then, because in mo the, the the idea of digital currencies is is peer to peer, so it will cut out the middleman, which is other banks because they might make money on the, on the transaction cost and fees. So they've always been an opponent of anything that has to do with digital currency or cryptocurrency and so forth. So at this point in time, these established banks in the Marshall Islands there are anti-crypto uh, uh, or digital. So, so does that mean that we have half of the solution working, which is the company solution, but the banking piece isn't yet there? Or how should we think about that? No, you just have to use other banks. So we have Dow uh, LLC clients that have bank accounts in Europe, in the United States, uh, in Dubai. So we, we have service providers that can help Dow's set up bank accounts. And some have just done it on their own. They just apply for an account at Mercury or Western Alliance Bank. Uh, we had someone had an account at Signature that obviously got, got shut down. So you just have to use the global banking system, even if you're a Marshall Islands entity. Let me also jump in on that, because if you look at the corporate registry program that we have, we do have, we're registering a corporation that are not Thomas Island, the Marshall Islands, but they are registered under the uh, corporate registry program that we established under our laws. So if there is going to be anything to adjudicate any dispute among the members 
of the corporation that there is in the Marshall Islands. Marshall Islands jurisdiction and Marshall Island laws and Marshall Island court system are going to be the one adjudicating these disputes because they are registered in our jurisdiction. It is no different than what we're trying to do with respect to with the with the DAO when we when we uh, have the DAO legislation in here, meaning that they are are domiciled in the Marshall Islands under our laws. Do you, uh, you know, would you be able to award licenses, for example, to uh, to somebody like uh, banking licenses? Like, you know, if if banks, uh, you know, if if uh, you know, you're a sovereign country, you passed a law on this. If somebody wanted to become a bank. Uh, could they potentially become a crypto-friendly bank and set up in the Marshall Islands? Is that a possibility? So I, I could speak to this because we've had this conversation with the banking commissioner in the Marshall Islands, and they're open to it. But first, um, they're looking to to MIDAO to help them draft the regulations under which that type of activity would occur. So currently, VASPs and banks are not supported, at least as DAO LLCs, in the Marshall Islands. But I should clarify that there is a distinction between the DAO and a protocol, right? So if a protocol does DeFi, that doesn't make you a VASP in the Marshall Islands. In the Marshall Islands, a VASP would be someone who's actually setting up a bank or an exchange or something like that. And to my knowledge, the banking commissioner is open to it, but only once we help draft a new regulation. No. So let, let, me, let me jump in on that. Let, let me just make it clear that so no, nobody can choose about it. Mars digital assets or digital currency or whatever you or the vases are not they're not that they're they're not the uh, they're not illegal in the Marshall Islands they're not outlawed they are allowed but they're the problem is we still have to develop the regulations the proper regulations for them to be regulated but as far as them registered of course they can come we're open for business they have to go through the process of getting registered but then They'll be have to be reviewed by the uh, the authorities, but no one is stopping them. But they're going to have to be. But they will say, "Well, we need to develop the regulations before the regulatory frameworks before we can allow you to start operating in our jurisdiction." So right now we're working on uh, an amendment to the DAO Act as well as a DAO regulation that makes it doesn't add any new rules, but makes it really clear to DAOs exactly how to follow all the laws of the Marshall Islands and actually provides them with other benefits, even in the other in the jurisdictions where the founders or other members reside just by categorizing things a certain way. You don't have to fly to the Marshall Islands. That, that's why we have an office there. It's the registered agent. So my DAO is your registered agent. Um, you don't have to fly there. You might want to because it's beautiful. Um, but uh, basically, we have variable pricing for uh, DAOs of different sizes. So usually there is a, a conversation that someone from our team has with the DAO or representatives of the DAO to figure out what's the model that works best for them. Oftentimes they have questions, you know, most people starting DAOs are new to DAOs because DAOs are new. And so we do offer not legal advice, but business advice for DAOs that ask questions about everything from what technology to use to what are common structures or common challenges that other DAOs are facing. And then again, we also get them connected with lawyers in our partner network when they need actual legal advice or tax advisors and, and things like that. So it's not just a form. Usually there's a bit of, it's kind of a consultative process where we help you through everything. That's right. So our clients interface with MyDAO directly, and then we interface with the government on their behalf. They don't have to have a management team. So we, we refer to the initial members of the DAO as the group of people that is forming the DAO. And that can be as few as one person. And it could be a founder, but it doesn't have to be or it could be the entire DAO forming it together all at the same time. There are KYC requirements for any beneficial members, we call them, because these are, uh, especially with nonprofit DAOs, these are members, not owners. Um, and so for a nonprofit DAO LLC any, or a for-profit, anyone who has 25% or more governance rights and any managers have to do KYC. But often that's one or zero people, right? So it's, it's whoever does want to be that person who's interfacing with us. And I think uh, in one of our draft regulations, we call that person a representative agent. So there will be a form for someone to fill out to say, I'm the person you should 
you know, talk to on behalf of the DAO. It doesn't give you any additional legal liability. It doesn't give you any power over the DAO. It's just a matter of process that we need someone to, to deal with. We need a, a phone number, an address, an email address, just in case we need to reach out. Got it. Okay. And so LLCs are actually well suited for this because they have lots of members potentially. And so you could have lots of symmetrical members and members of the DAO. So it's, it's sort of a scaling up of LLCs, as you mentioned. Yeah. And a lot of LLCs also have membership interests already, which is a way of dividing uh, governance rights and or economic ownership uh, in, a, in a more uh, nuanced way. So for example, a lot of our DAOs are one token, one vote DAOs. And the way we construct that is that each token represents one membership interest. And then you do you have proposals where there's a quorum of, you know, 25 percent of the membership interests and you need 51 percent of the people voting of the membership interests voting to carry a proposal. And so we're really tying these new Web3 concepts to just like you said, LLC concepts that have been around for a long time. And can, can you name some of the most uh, interesting DAOs that you've seen, like uh, any that have publicly called themselves Marshall Island DAOs? Yeah, sure. And, and the nice thing is that a lot of these um, DAOs have everything public on the internet and on chain. And so, you know, anyone can go see this information. But uh, we have Moon DAO, which is the DAO that I think has already sent people into space. Um, Crypto Mondays is a global meetup community in over 50 cities around the world that uh, a lot of folks have probably heard of. Uh, Admiralty DAO, so that's the DAO for the Clipper Exchange, which is a top 100 you know, DeFi uh, platform. Those are some good examples. So that was great hearing from Adam on kind of, um, you know, uh, on how my DAO has facilitated it and gotten 100 something DAO set up. I know, you know, both uh, both you and the sender have been working on this. You, you mentioned you had some remarks that uh, had been prepared. Just a few few points I wanted to um, convey, and some of them are just reiteration of what um, Sather Paul had mentioned earlier. And it's uh, I just wanted to bring up how the government is in full support of the, the, the law that was passed. It went through the proper and thorough uh, process as, as, as any laws that go through the parliament. And when it reached uh, the parliament, um, it was uh, unanimously decided that uh, to to be passed, and as I, if I re remember correctly, um, all that were in attendance, all the mem members of parliament that were in attendance, were would we did voted yes that the law should be passed, except for one, if I re remember correctly. I just wanted also to convey that um, we see this as an opportunity, and we've been exploring means and ways that we could. Uh, establish a stable economy for the for the RMI, given that we're other than the financial assistance that we're receiving from from the U.S. under the compact agreement we have with the U.S., we're mostly covered by water, so our resources is basically mainly uh, marine resources. And given our current situation with the uh, uh, sorry the climate change. Low-lying islands, and we're currently the front front liners uh, to the changes of our climate change, and we see that it would be, given the high rising uh, the rising level of uh, water sea sea level and uh, the rising uh, temperatures would affect uh, the marine life, and surely in the future it might affect our our resources in and uh, marine resources. So by saying that, I'm just trying to. Uh, convey our governments uh, our, our, our thinking of trying to explore means and ways of um, trying to establish a stable economy given we're a small island to one of these states and my thought is that we see it's it's a perfect opportunity uh, for us to to explore and look into the future to obtain a a, a steady stream of uh, revenue for RMI so we're we're in full support of the Maita, uh, the government of the government of the Marshall Islands, and uh, like you, uh, it was mentioned that uh, we have a ship registry, which is uh, I if I remember correctly, you are currently ranking in uh, second or third in uh, ship registry rankings. Uh, and we definitely see Maita registry also would would be would benefit the economy of the RMI. Well, that's actually a great precedent because, you know, a ship can be registered anywhere. And if the Marshall Islands is a top ship registry, this is like a cloud registry. 
for all of these, you know, on-chain entities, which could be in theory registered anywhere. And so you registered them there. That's actually pretty interesting. The law of the sea, things like that. That's cool. Um, and uh, Sender, did you have uh, anything uh, that uh, you were going to say? You know, just to complement what the minister alluded to earlier and what Adam actually emphasized on our quest to be the premier jurisdiction globally uh, for DAOs. And we see that the digitization of our, our, our financial sector, our economic sector, uh, and even technology is, is really the future. So, you know, if you really look at where we are, we are such a small, uh, small island countries, a small island country in a fiscal setting, but with the digitization of all these uh, sectors that I, I, I mentioned, it is really an equalizer, so to speak, because then it, there's really no excuses for us to be, say, they, we, we're at the end of the global supply chain. We are at the mercy of the global supply chain of goods and services. But with the, with, with the technology of the Web3 and all that stuff, that actually is an equalizer that everybody's on the same equal footing, so to speak. Uh, so we actually, the advantage that we have, we're very small, we're, ve we're very agile, and we can actually uh, have a uh, short t turnaround time to, to be able to amend our laws and our regulations so we can be the gator for these, uh, uh, these organizations uh, on the Web3. I, I say that uh, that is going to be our advantage, and 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 you know, our size could be used as an advantage for us in in the, the traditional settings of e economies and finance, where our size is really our disadvantage because we we lack the economy of scale. But with with uh, with technology, size is our advantage. Because you're nimble and, and you can uh, do things even if uh, even if folks don't, you can get to consensus much much sooner than many other countries. I'd love in particular if there was an island that was large enough that you might be able to set up a self-driving car zone or something like that just to kind of show it can be done. You know, are, are they are they just are they just a little like piece of rock in the middle of the ocean? Oh yeah, they're they can be ten acres land. They could be, huh. No, they're actually land. They're like private land where you can, like, like Richard Branson who bought his own island in the Caribbean. Actually, you can actually lease your own island and develop it and have your own uh, exclusive island for yourself or a resort. Wow. Okay, wait. So you can get a 10-acre island in the, in the Marshall Islands. And then, of course, you have to go and build the harbor and the dock, and you have to be able to get people back and forth and so on and so forth. Or, or do some of them come with that? No, no, it's up to you. It, what we're trying to do is w when we digitize these islands, because we're, because, you know, we're trying to uh, put it in the smart contract. And by doing that, we're digitizing the lease of that island. And then you will have access to an island by, to yourself, let's say for 50 years, 400 years, uh, what have you. And then how do you, it's like a one-stop shop. So you don't have to come to the Marshall Islands and actually, uh, go through the legal process of acquiring a land, we will do all of that and put them into an NFT. And when you buy the NFT, you're actually buying the lease and have rights, exclusive right to that island, to yourself for the next 50 to 100 years. That's really awesome. What is the biggest uh, island uh, like that that you're selling or NFTing? Leasing, I should say. Well, it, it's different. I mean, the island that... The island that I was I was gonna use it as uh, as, uh, as you know as, as you start with uh, as like a prototype uh, is is like three acres three to five acres something like that of land. And is it is it I mean the Marshall Islands it's a million square meters I think you said or a million square miles of ocean. So is that near one of the main islands or how, how should we think about that? Is it all the way out there? Is it near one of the main ones? How, like, uh, so, so, or how, how should we think about that? Are they all nearby or are they all kind of scattered around the, the ocean? Yeah. It's one of the, is in one of the, is on Kwajalein Atoll. That's where the United States military base is at. It's one of the, is on one of the urban centers. 
But by the way, the Marshall Islands is one of the most popular tourist destinations for the richest people in the world. They take their yacht and they park next to one of these mostly uninhabited islands and have some of the best snorkeling and scuba diving in the entire planet, basically with your own private island just for that week, hmm. right? So especially for anyone who has a yacht, then you don't even have to deal with some of the challenges of flying in and having to build your own cabin on your own private island. Just stay on your yacht. Well, maybe a Dow could lease a yacht or something like that. That's really interesting. Yeah, there's got to be a yacht Dow already. Yeah, that's probably true. I think that that basically covers it. So just to kind of uh, recap, um, you pass a new law in 2022. It enables basically a fiat company, crypto company interface for LLCs and LLC-like entities, aka DAOs. It's crypto native. It has the full support of the government. It sort of extends what you've already done with your successful ship registry. This is not your first crypto law. You've actually been involved in this space for almost five years now, which is eternity in, in crypto years. And about 100 entities have already been set up. And uh, if people want to learn more, then go to, uh, I think, mydow.org. Uh, so, uh, Senator, Minister, do you have any uh, closing words? Anything uh, you want to say? Oh, we just wanted to thank you for the time and really glad to be part of your uh, podcast. And looking forward to uh, the future encounter. Wonderful. Great. And we'll come and visit the Marshall Islands and uh, may, buy, may buy an island or something. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Balaji. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. This is great. Thanks for coming on.